why a royal commission on the status of women? Don't women have a pretty good status in Canada now, Mrs. Bird? Well, I think that they have a very good status, but they're not quite sure what it is yet. And a great many women feel that perhaps they're being discriminated against when they go to work because they aren't paid as much as men or because they don't get the promotions even though they work just as hard and know sometimes more than the man who is put ahead of them. I think the important thing about this Royal Commission is that the world has changed very much. We've become an urbanized society. Working women are married now and it's taken for granted the way it certainly wasn't even ten years ago. And that what I think we should have to find out is what are the kind of things that a coming generation wants and needs in the way of education, in the way of perhaps day nurseries if they do go out to work. All these things have to be looked into and understood. And I think this is, should be a commission in depth, not just a fact-finding business. In 1967, a Royal Commission on the Status of Women was established to look into the way women in Canada were at a disadvantage compared to Canadian men. It was an in-depth analysis on the complicated nature of why women had lower earning potential than men. It was partly in response to the Act to Promote Equal Pay for Female Employees that was established in 1956, which prohibited employers from paying women less than men for doing equal work. However, 11 years later, it was apparent that equal pay for equal work was only part of the complex problem for Canadian women. Now, over 50 years later, Canadian women have seen some improvement to their earning potential, but are still at a disadvantage. A 2014 study comparing full-time university-educated males to females found that women make 82 cents for every dollar earned by a man in the public sector and that lowers to 73 cents for every dollar in the private sector. That study doesn't include the high percentage of women who work part-time, are precariously employed, or unpaid domestic labor. The pay imbalance is partly due to the employment choices women make to support their families. Many women choose part-time or precarious work in order to care for their children as a way of saving costs on childcare. An average family in Toronto pays $36,000 a year on childcare services for one child. So many families save money by having a parent stay home, often the mother. Familial obligations are a large contributor to the higher percentage of women working part-time work. Many jobs that are part-time in nature are paid less than if the same job was full-time. Many part-time underpaid labor is often minimum wage, and since women are choosing these jobs, they represent a higher percentage of Canadians receiving minimum wage. Meaning, women are more affected by laws surrounding minimum wage. In Vancouver, to make a living wage, you have to make $20.91 an hour. However, the minimum wage in BC is currently at $12.65, with plans for that to be raised to $15.20 by 2021. But with soaring housing prices, the living wage will inevitably be higher, leaving the minimum wage far below what is needed to survive. This type of legislature is what keeps women in poverty. If the federal government raised the minimum wage of all provinces to a living wage, it would increase the earning potential of women, who are more affected by minimum wage laws than men. This system forces some women to choose jobs where they can supplement their low wage by earning tips. Many women find service jobs where their customers provide tips based on the quality of service they receive. This creates an unsafe power dynamic between the customer and the employee. Female service providers are often subjected to sexual harassment or demeaning comments that they accept in order to receive a paycheck above minimum wage. For women who are able to find employment above minimum wage, they still face systemic challenges to receive equal pay. In a company, if there is a department that is comprised solely of female employees, the company is able to keep their salaries lower without contributing to inequitable pay. This kind of gender segregated pay is a contributor to prolonging the wage gap since it's a difficult problem to solve with legislation. Another large reason for the pay imbalance is that the top earners in Canada, the 1%, who make over $400,000 a year are mainly men. 
men make up the majority of the top earners in Canada, whereas women make up the majority of the lowest minimum wage earners. With the growing class imbalance, where the wealthiest people are gaining power and the lowest earners have the smallest chance to improve their quality of life, it leaves women unable to move up the pay scale. The current Canadian tax system keeps the 1% gaining wealth without providing relief for its lowest earners. The labour market has also seen a steady decrease in unionization, which keeps workers with lower pay, higher rates of sexual harassment and gender discrimination. To solve these problems women face in Canada today, the first step the federal government of Canada should take is implementing universal childcare, a program that would increase accessibility to parents and decrease costs. It would allow women to find, sustain, and grow their careers while taking care of their families the same way men are able to. One step further would be to reevaluate the current parental leave offered to parents. Implementing a Quebec-style use-it-or-lose-it parental leave for the second parent, which is usually the father, where both parents can stay home for five weeks after their child is born or they lose that extra time off work. It creates a societal norm for fathers to take time off work after the birth of their child and helps the father understand the toll of emotional and domestic labor that usually falls on mothers. The federal government has implemented a gender-based analysis across departments and agencies, but they need to show clear intent on creating economic policies to respond to the gender differences found in occupations, pay hours, and unpaid work. The government needs to adjust the current tax system to slow down the growing class imbalance that is affecting women more than men and keeping them the primary gender making up the lowest earners in Canada. Despite the shortcomings we have seen in the past 50 years, the Royal Commission on the Status of Women has given us a starting point for gender equality. Canada created the Status of Women Canada, which is a government-funded organization that advocates for the social, economic, and political well-being of Canadian women. With organizations such as this one, Canadian women have support to hold the federal government accountable to stop gender equality across the country.